Hello, SimScale users. Today, I will be walking you through how you can use volumetric heat sources in your simulations. This option is available for two simulation types, the first being convective heat transfer simulations without the business approximation, and the other is CHT. Before we start, let us take a look at our geometry and mesh that we'll be using in our simulation. The first mesh is the one for buoyant analysis types. As we can see, it's a three-dimensional space which encloses a cell zone, a cuboidal cell zone, and a few walls. This was created using Snappy Hex Mesh on the SimScale platform. We will be using this cell zone as a source of heat later on in the video. The second mesh that we see here is the one we are going to use for conjugate heat transfer. This also contains a three-dimensional enclosed space which encloses a three-dimensional heat element or a volume element that will act as a source of heat for us. Let us now move on to the simulation setup. We'll start with the buoyant analysis type. We proceed to set up the rest of the simulation as we have seen in other tutorials, selecting the domain, the model for gravity, materials, initial condition for pressure, temperature, velocity, and viscosity, and boundary conditions on the walls. Please note that both the initial condition and the boundary condition for temperature has been set to 293, which is the room temperature. This shows that there is no other source of heat so far. If we let the simulation proceed right now, in this very manner, no exchange of heat will happen and we would expect the air domain to stay as it is. However, if we want to add heat sources, we need to go under Advanced Concepts and under Heat Sources, click on Add Heat Source. This would create a heat source option where you can specify your requirements. The options that one has for heat source are either a total heat source, which would mean that you can specify the net amount of power that a particular volume will exude, or you can choose a volumetric heat source, wherein the amount of heat that you specify here in this column will correspond to the amount of heat which is released per meter cube volume. So you have two options to specify the way your heat source behaves. In terms of assignments, this volumetric heat source can be assigned to either an existing entity type, which is either a cell zone or a region, or you can assign it to a geometry primitive. In this example that we will see in, in the beginning, we will be assigning it to the cell zone that was shown in the beginning. So this cuboid, this blue colored cuboid right here. To that we assign a volumetric source of 1000 watts per meter cube. After finalizing the numeric settings and the simulation control for our time steps and, and process account, we proceed to begin a simulation. Right now what I'll be showing here is an already pre-computed simulation which was stopped because the amount of data that we had received was enough to demonstrate this concept. Let us take a look at the result of this simulation.
what I have here is a thresholded volume of temperature. So basically, in every part of the region which lies between a temperature value of 297 and 300 Kelvin. We can see here that the source of heat for us has successfully heated a part of the air which has eventually risen with time and spread across our enclosed domain. This is a result of the heat source that we had chosen in the simulation. Let me now demonstrate how we can use geometry primitives to assign heat sources to a particular domain. In the same setup as before, I will now be using a geometry primitive which is basically a cuboid in one corner of the enclosed space as can be seen in the viewer. This enclosed geometry primitive will act as a volumetric heat source for us. So everything in the setup is exactly the same as before except that under heat sources I have added a total heat source of 100 watts to this particular geometry primitive called Cartesian box. If you create a new advanced concept under heat sources you will notice that if you need to create a new geometry primitive, there is an option on the right hand side where you can select whether you want to create a box, a sphere or a cylinder. This will eventually redirect you to the geometry primitives tab where you can define the properties of your cylinder. For now, we do not need it, so we will delete that geometry primitive. We already have a heat source which has been assigned to a Cartesian box. Like the last time, we proceed with the run and let it finish. Let me now show you the results. What we see here again is an ISO volume or a threshold of temperature from the range of 295 Kelvin to a large number above. What is important here is that the geometry primitive which was assigned as a heat source in our simulation has successfully managed to input a certain amount of heat into our domain which has heated up the air and the hot air has eventually risen up into the room and diffused itself across the domain. This was a demonstration of how you can use geometry primitives as volumetric heat sources. Finally, we will take a look at how we can use volumetric heat sources for conjugate heat transfer simulations. As mentioned in the beginning of the video, we have a case where a three-dimensional heating element is present inside an enclosed space as can be seen in this viewer. We wish to add a heat source to this element which is present in the center of the domain and see its effect on the air inside the enclosed space. So we select the analysis type to be conjugate heat transfer transient. We assign the mesh, the model and materials for different domains. In this case we assume air to be present inside the enclosure and a copper based heating element. The initial conditions are assigned to default values of room temperature, zero velocity and atmospheric pressure. And for all walls on the outside of the domain we assign a no-slip 
boundary condition with room temperature on their surfaces. Please note that for CHC simulations, anything which is not assigned to a particular boundary condition will be assumed to be an interface. So the walls between, between the heating element and the enclosed space will constitute as an interface. So there will be a transfer of heat across these interfaces. Now, to specify a heat source, we go under advanced concepts and add a new heat source. To this heat source, we've assigned a source of 200 watts, and this has been assigned to the entire solid zero, which, if you see, is precisely the heating element to which we want to add power. It's, the assignment is as simple as checking that particular solid under, under entity types. We assign the numeric settings, which I have left as default for the simulation. And we define a runtime and number of processes. Eventually, we run the simulation. Again, I have stopped it earlier than it was supposed to because we have had enough result components to see the effect of the heat source. Let me show you now the post-processing of this case. As we can see in this slice that I have made across the domain, the air surrounding the heating element has gained some heat from the element and has eventually begun to rise up. First, we can see here the change in temperature, which shows that the air is actually heated up. And the velocity contours show us that the air is actually in motion. So in, in the entire domain, the air is sort of spreading itself and moving because of the difference in temperature, which is precisely the concept of natural convection. Thank you for your attention and all the best with using SimScale.